Hey gang, so I was asked to talk about how to share the gospel. You know, this is one of the passions that, that I have. It's not always been that way though. When I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was, I was um, very intimidated. I had low self-esteem. I thought, well, do I want to really step out and share something that, um, that my peers might be uncomfortable with or something like that? And, um, and I really, uh, I never really talked about it that much. Unless I was working at camp in the summertime, then I was all about it because it was expected there. But when I was at school and playing sports and things, it's not that I hid it from people, but I certainly was not uh, one to talk about it. And there's a, probably a couple reasons why, but uh, I can go into those uh, maybe sometime later. But what I wanted to, to talk with you about today is just how to share the gospel. and. There's, there's a lot of, there, there's as many different methods to sharing the gospel as, as as many as there are conversations that can be had because it just comes up in conversations naturally with people. But one, one thing that I have come to understand is I have talked to more and more people about it, um, uh, whether it's talking to the athletes or the politicians or or uh, just going on missions trips and things, I've come to understand, have a better understanding of what the gospel is. So one of the first things that, that I do when I go up to people is I'll say something like in, in conversation, hey, um, so t tell, me what you, t tell me what you believe. Like what is core in your life? I'm just interested to hear it. And so maybe they'll be like, oh, I don't know because it's, they're intimidated too. So, but they start to share and, and you just be interested. And then when they're done sharing, you, you just say something like, that, that's incredible. Thanks for sharing that with me. Hey, I'll tell you what, would you mind if I shared with you what, what I believe too? And of course, if you're doing it to a peer, to a friend, then it's a lot more conversational and, and a lot easier to do that way. Once they've opened up to you, then you can open up to them. So here's, here's the biggest thing about the gospel, okay? If I asked you, what sin is it that keeps a person from heaven? what would you say? I heard, I heard a lady one time, she was telling another lady, these are retired pastor's wives. So, uh, the, the one lady said, well, my biggest regret is this girl that was in her Sunday school class uh, years ago. She's like, I just couldn't get her to understand that she was a sinner. And th this girl kept saying that she, as far as she knew, she hadn't done anything wrong. And she's like, no, surely you've told a lie. And I guess the, the girl was like, no, I, I don't think I have told a lie. And, and the, the lady was like, well, surely you've stolen something, a pencil or something like that. And, and the, uh, the little girl was like, I, I, I don't think I have. And, and the Sunday school teacher, this pastor's wife, was like, I couldn't get her to understand that she had certainly done something wrong that made her be a sinner. And I wanted to scream out to her, although I didn't, that's not it. That's not what sin is. So the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, that there's no one righteous. Nope, not one. Well, how is that? Is it because we've done something wrong when we were younger? No, listen, here's the deal. We have to go clear back to the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve were told that they could have anything that they wanted in the Garden of Eden, except for the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Bible says, in the day that you do, you shall surely die. Well, they did. And there was consequences. There was consequences for Eve, for the woman, but there was also consequences for Adam, the man, and he had the biggest consequences. The consequence of Adam was that now sin would be passed down through the seed of man so that every person ever born is born with a nature that is opposed to God. So therefore, it's not about the things we do, it's about the person we are. So as you're talking to somebody, help them to realize, you know, we're all born. We're born with a, a nature. It's, it's baked into our DNA that we have sin. We are sinners against a, a holy God. And that's why there is death. Death means the other is physical death, but it also means spiritual death. And in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says the wages of sin, what we're born with, well, it's death. It's separation from God. It makes us opposed to God. But it doesn't stop there. It says, but the free gift of God 
is eternal life. And it comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that's the, that's the gospel message in, in, in itself right there. And I would, I would use verses like Romans chapter 3, verse 10, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, and Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And, uh, and that kind of, um, if, you can, if you can get those verses, wrap your mind around those uh, three or four verses, then you've really got the, the basics of the gospel down. And, uh, but maybe, maybe you're like, I don't know, I don't know if I can do it. What if this, what if that? I'm too timid. I don't live a life so that people would watch. Well, we'll talk about that another day maybe. But, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how you share the gospel. That is the gospel. And now you just have to find ways to bring it up in everyday conversation. Hope that's helpful to you. If not, give me, a, give, give me some feedback. I'd love to fo have follow-up follow conversation with you, okay? Take care.